automation can help fix the growing supply chain crisis. My guest is Lior Elizari. He is CEO and co-founder of Invia Robotics. Hello, Lior. Hello, Robert. Thank you for having me on the show. Good to see you. Thank you very much for being with me. So I just want to ask you to start off. Is the technology that is required to automate different for e-commerce fulfillment logistics and for other types of act- activities? Yeah, so e-commerce has sort of put a huge uh, you know, problem in our logistics space. And the main problem for it is that the access to the items are done in a randomized manner. So it's called random access and random in, where you know, mm-hmm. before when we used to fill to retail, you would have one pallet with a thousand of the same items. And we had a lot of processes, a lot of logistics uh, automations to do that. With e-commerce, what's happening is you're fulfilling a pallet but now that pallet has a thousand different items. Each item is actually very different and you got to go to different spots in the warehouse. On top of this, our customers or e-commerce customers have to have a huge array of, of items to supply the need to you know, the, uh, the consumer. So they might mm-hmm. have a hundred thousand to almost a million different SKUs. And each day you're collecting different set of them, different random set. So that is the problem. And that's why the automation that, you know, normally had to do with just moving pallets, moving a large number of items. Now the problem is how do you move small items randomly and independently? So the automation there is is very different on how you approach the problem and how you do it in in the normal chain. I wonder if just a few years ago, such automation would not even have been possible. I mean, today it scales so much better. We have artificial intelligence. We have so much more sophisticated systems. Is it the fact that this is a more recent development that this automation can even exist? Yeah, so it's actually both things that happen at the same time, right? One is consumer demand for e-commerce has grown. And the other problem is how do we solve it? And AI is extremely important because you have to coordinate. This is a huge dance that you have to do inside a warehouse. You know, imagine before you only had a few set of items, maybe 300 different units that would kind of move around in coordination around the warehouse. Now imagine having, you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of different items coordinating, each one has to move. So coordinating every single order, when it should be done, how it should be done, uh, that is very, very important. And actually this is where a lot of the uh, automation gets utilized. If you don't have that, you can have a lot of automation that is just not gonna help at all. So you know, so mm-hmm. our system like in Logic and other places, really what they do is, is try to coordinate all those items moving as in harmony using the automation to move them as quickly as possible you know, out the door to the customer. That's incredibly complex. But that being the case, what can be done to make automation more accessible to all businesses and to help accelerate adoption of this automation technology? So the good news is actually with this new tech of automation with AI and robotics, uh, they're meant to adapt into existing infrastructures a lot easier. So before Mm -hmm. in the old way of automation, it would take you two to three years. It was a huge monumental project that you have to take. The good news is now you can introduce that automation very, very quickly into the warehouse. So the best thing is to really try to understand what is the workflow that you're trying to achieve? What is the SLAs that you're trying to achieve to the customer? Are you trying to do an hour turnaround time, a day, two days, a week? All those have different parameters to these kind of automations you would use. And then you can use various automations to move those items as quickly as possible. So either goods to person, person to goods, all of these kind of systems are trying to move those items as quickly as possible. Do you believe this automation we're talking about has done anything or can do anything to help us solve the supply chain crisis that we're having right now? Does it play a role and is it good timing? Yeah, so first of all, it's good timing. Uh, However, we don't have enough of it deployed. So we're trying to move as quickly as possible, right? Because they're still using the old way of automating, right? Using the pallet type of of workflows to the e-commerce. And that's where we're having those frictions. That's why it's not Mm -hmm. flowing. That's why we have all these containers stuck in there because there is no good planner to figure out which container should go up first. How should you move that first? And all that just flows right through the warehouse, right? Which product do you have to replan at the time? Should I get more packers? Should I get more replan people? Should I get more pickers? And all that again has to flow harmonically. And then doing this, right, and adding those infrastructures in place before used to take forever. Now the good news is you can do that a lot quicker, move that a lot quicker. So we're moving at a much faster pace, getting, Mm -hmm. you know, getting a handle over the logistical challenges. 
And yet technology marches on, becomes ever more innovative. I'm wondering what you see as the next big technological breakthrough that we can expect to see in industrial automation. Yeah, so obviously adoption is a huge key in this uh, space. So a lot of the automation that helps both, you know, in educating the customer how to use that, that's in the immediate term, uh, using the, so the software themselves to automate, to make sure that the automation is being utilized as best as possible. And then obviously the, as the automation also increases in capability, the next stage is, you know, I feel fine manipulation right now, gross manipulation, moving boxes, moving um, you know, bigger items is, is sort of not solved, but it's a, you know, a huge progress there. And then the next stage will be fine manipulation, digging inside totes, picking those things. That's where you see those robots aren't coming into play. Right. The next stage is the full, you know, dark. Being warehouse. able to reach into a tote of different types of products and pick out the right one. Exactly. Right. Yep. I mean, right now, robotics, a lot of robotic situations are that the robot simply brings the human to the pick face. And it's the human's responsibility to take the stuff and put it on the robot. The robot takes it off to, you know, where it needs to be. But you're saying the robot can actually be involved in, that, in the actual picking in, in the future. Yeah, exactly. So systems like us actually take the box and we bring the box over to a person. Then the person just digs inside, you know, takes what he needs and picks it out. And the I next see. stage is to get that arm to get inside. And that's getting very complex because you have these totes, you have to pull the tote out, you have to bring the arm, you have to pick one item among a bunch of other ones. You can think of returns. So as items are coming in, that's gonna be the next huge challenge to solve in the logistics, right? This is random access into the warehouse. You're not fulfilling a thousand of the same items, you're fulfilling a thousand of different items back into the warehouse. So. Yeah. All these automations will help a lot with that. But at the same time, the automation has to adjust to different types of warehouse warehouses that we're seeing today, even like micro fulfillment centers that aren't as big uh, and might be on the same the same actual place as a as a retail store. Is it suitable for that? Can it be scaled down to that type of operation? Yeah, that's right, Robert. I mean, that's a huge problem. Is actually how do we put these warehouses that before you had one DC in one location, a million square foot. How do we break that up into hundreds of DCs, spread them across the country? Because that's the way you're going to be able to deliver something within an hour, right? Within, right. A, within a day. You're not going to be able to deliver it from New York to California in one hour. So these automations are actually meant, and this is where we're talking about robotic automations. So robotic automation is the next level in, in adaptability to adapt into these small structures, small environments, even be in a regular building with regular floors, be able to fulfill, because you can imagine being having a warehouse in the city, a million square foot, that's not going to happen. So you're going to have maybe a 50,000 square foot uh, and you're going to have to just, you know, supply that automation as quickly as possible and have that uh, be able to produce the throughput that you need to all those people in there. Yeah. And it's amazing the progress of technology and yet there's still so much more to go. In the meantime, humans are still part of the equation, right? That's, there will always be part of the equation. There'll always be people there's in there somewhere. Problem. Yeah. Right now, I think uh, robots don't solve their own problems. So you need people to solve the robots problems. They're good at just the day to day task, eliminating that. But the day to day problems, we still need a lot of people for that. Great to know. Lior Elizari of Invia Robotics. Thanks so much for being with me today. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Robert.